fucking legendary clip. Big up fucking Theo Vaughan, the absolute gangster, appeared on GRE recently, which I've got to listen to. I haven't listened to it yet. And dropped an absolute banger and, you know, a couple of fucking stray shots over at fucking Crystalia. I think, oddly enough, Theo's been one of the people, I think, within that group of guys who I think has struggled the most with Chris Alia's cancellation and the allegations around him because of the demands it put on him. Because, you know, I don't think Theo likes it when people kind of ask him to comment on things and kind of push him and try and get him into like talk about counterculture shit. It gets really uncomfortable because, you know, he's just a funny dude and he likes to say ridiculous shit. He just doesn't want people to kind of take him ever take him too seriously. So when Chris Lee got cancelled, I felt like a lot of his fans, his people overall, just kind of pressuring him to kind of say stuff. And he didn't know what to say, right? <laughs> so now I like that his approach to kind of addressing it is just always fucking joking about this shit. Like, and fucking making really funny jokes because I think Theo, this is my, this is my theory, it's my theory. Again, rubbish theory, but it's my theory. I think because Theo is from a real place in America, somewhere in the South, not sure particularly where, but I also believe that he's been brought up and seen real people. So I feel like Theo's radar for like freaks and weirdo is pretty high. He's got a good radar for spotting a freak and weirdo. So I think a part of him probably always knew that Chris was involved in the dark arts for real. A part of him always kind of looked at Chris and thought, there's something not quite right about this guy. So when the news did come out about him... <laughs> right Chris the Diddler Chris the Pedo right he suddenly was like oh it all made sense but he obviously gave him the benefit of the doubt at one time they were kind of cool they had a couple of really good episodes on his pod they kind of had good actual comedic banter on his show but ultimately I felt like Theo always kind of knew he was a bit of a wrong and so now the way that he responds to it it's just to be funny and I felt this little bit of catnip that he dropped and these you know this little subtle drone strike on the GRE recent episode was absolutely sublime because he really he kind of like crowbarred that one in you could you could see the wheels in his head turning as the setup was coming like he really did it and Joe for once didn't like say why would you say that like he actually laughed and actually contributed to it as well and actually added to the joke that was actually quite funny so big up Joe Rogan for understanding jokes now it's fucking hilarious I, I like him when he's like this when he's silly like a 20 year old adult or like a 30 year old adult it gets exponentially creepier <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right and like if, if you just graduated and you're 18 and your girlfriend is 17 that shit is completely normal yeah you know but if you're 19 and she's 17, 17 people start to look a little sideways mm -hmm. huh that extra 12 months makes a big difference if you're 20 and she's 17 People will get very upset with you, even in places where it's legal, where where it is legal in a few places, which is kind of weird. Yeah, and if you are bad. 35 and she's 17, you can't be a comedian anymore. <laughs> I'll no. tell you that. that uh, are like, you sure? I don't, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Who, who knows? I mean, I who know. knows, bro? Who knows? I don't know. But it's um, weird, like, what's legal versus... <laughs> oh, I fucking love it. For once. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> Big up Joe, that was fucking amazing. Amazing, amazing. If you're 35, you can't be a comedian. I find that fucking incredible. That was a good joke. That was fucking brilliant, man. Honestly, brilliant. And, you know, that's one of the things, like, if Chris never ever gets convicted in criminally for, you know, for the alleged crimes that he may have committed, I hope for some victims... It is good enough. One of the things that he has to kind of suffer from for the rest of his life is the fact that people are always going to laugh at him and always going to mock him, you know, for what he is allegedly may have done. It's not going to, you know, count for much, to be fair. But <laughs> the fact that this is going to be a smudge that he's never going to be able to fucking clean, a cloud he's never going to be able to shake off is something that I feel like should be um, somewhat celebrated in his own way. But yeah, I found that joke fucking hilarious, man. I legitimately found it fucking, fucking hilarious. <laughs> if you're a comedian. Oh, fucking. <laughs> you can't be a comedian if you're a diddler. It's fucking brilliant, man. I still have an interesting, I still have like a, like a, a somewhat edgy hot take in that I feel like 
cancel culture should just be like, you know, you should try to get cancel someone. Try if you want to get someone cancelled. But if their fans don't care, you shouldn't keep trying to convince their fans to cancel the person, you know? Because I think Chris is a good example of it. His fans don't give a fuck. So this whole campaign that people have in terms of like educating the fans and attacking them on the comments and telling them, hey, how can you support them? I think that's a bit lame. I think if the fans don't mind supporting him, let them let them support him. If all the institutions, the platforms, the platform and stuff, cool. But if the fans don't mind, then what can you do? It's a bit sick. It's a bit gross. Can make you feel a bit uneasy. But you know, they all adults at the end of the day. And if they don't have a problem with it, then it's hard why anybody else should really. Outside of the victims, of course. But hey, what do I know? What do I know? Yeah, Zaki Supercello is right, right here in the comments. Cancel culture is corporate culture actually it's actually corporate cancel culture triple c's actually corporate cancel culture it doesn't actually work in the real world because the real world people don't seem to give a fuck because my other hot take on that is mostly because and i've seen it myself most adults don't really have hobbies or don't really have things to do and there's a real dearth in quality of like good programming to watch and shit so if you've grown accustomed to liking a particular person content creator podcaster who entertains you for free for like six hours three hours a week you know it's hard to let go of that block of time that they are entertaining you per week because what are you going to fill it with I, you know you just kind of le learn to kind of like compartmentalize okay cool i put that pedo shit to one side i just focus on the fucking crash congratulations pod you know i can kind of get the logic behind it because if you listen to his pod all the time and you listen to him with his brother listen to you watch his fucking youtube vlogs and that's what you kind of you know m your main consumption of content is during a week it's hard to justify like just dumping it or what what are you going to replace it with it's selfishly even if it's heinous crimes that you're dumping it for like what are you going to replace it with selfishly there's not a lot out there that's good like you know ai is taking over fucking the writers room in hollywood for a good reason because most writers are fucking garbage at their jobs and they can easily be replaced by fucking prompts in you know artificial intelligence so there's not a lot of good shit out there. So if you do find good shit you resonate with, I understand why you stick with it. Even if the person's a fucking pedo, a rapist, a creep, <laughs> an abuser. I absolutely understand. I wouldn't do it if that was me. I wouldn't because, you know, I think there's enough content out there you can find, you know, to kind of piece together and fit in the spots. You don't need to listen to those type of people. And generally, I think even looking at it from an objective point of view, even if you're not a fan of Chris the 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 you know the crystalia pre and post diddling accusations the content creator the comedian or the entertainer that he was like it's night and day he's not as funny he's not as loose he's not as entertaining he's horrendous he's a shadow of his former self like legitimately so you're not really getting what you were kind of accustomed to anymore like the magic is gone it's completely gone so you're kind of hanging on for what a former shell of a man, like a, a, a basic, a, kind of a has-been in a way. We're not going to talk about that too much because, you know, it's not my fucking place. So anyway, um, that's going to be it for now for the fucking random show episode number. What was it? I don't know. One of these numbers. You know what it is if you're watching it. Thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate all you mother, mother packers for tuning in. It's been a fucking pleasure as per usual. If it's your first time, please make sure that you smash that like for me down below. Greatly appreciate. Um, most people say, oh, yeah, Tucci is saying it's in the chat. Who said to me, do you remember Theo joking about Chris being a predator years before they got exposed? Yeah, of course. That's why I said, I think, yeah, good point. I think that's why I said, I think Theo kind of knew always. So maybe knew jokingly knew just suspicion inkling because he's lived a real life and he's you know lived a life where he's encountered some very interesting people like people that wore wooden t-shirts or he actually knew knew like you know because they may have shared a couple of you know tijuana legal girls allegedly who knows <laughs> what people saying here are those women's purses no they're not they're just they're unisex purses pg they're made by a brand called telfor um, I wouldn't say they're women's. Some people could classify them as women's, but I like to wear, you know, I'm a fan of wearing um, satchels and purses in general. So I have quite a few, actually. I have this one, which is a Telfar one. I have another nondescript shitty blue one that I sometimes wear from time to time. But one of my favorite ones is this one, actually. 
which is a Vivian Westwood collaboration with a company called Cambridge Satchel. So I wear these things quite often, actually. So it's not, I wouldn't say it's a women's bag, but you may say it is, but I actually wear these things because I like to put my laptops and shit in it and whatever. And I've also got, look, I've got another bag inside this bag, which is a bag I bought in Mexico many years ago that I also wear. So I have a tendency to wear very zesty <laughs> looking bags because, you know, I like fashion-y stuff and, you know, I'm a cool guy. <laughs> cool guys wear cool things i guess but yeah and i'm also a guy wearing a fucking rain jacket and some shitty aliexpress glasses indoors you know and i'm sweating because of this fucking led bar so i'm not the most conventional type of human but yeah i like to wear these type of satchels and bags and stuff so for me these bags are a godsend because i've always carried loads of fucking shit on me as well and i need them day to day to carry all my fucking belongings and stuff so um, you can call it a handbag I can call it a fucking great bag I fucking love this shit this is my game, this is my life anyway, enough about that <laughs>